The first time I watched Lawnmower Man, I started thinking to myself how great it would be to play games in VR. I just had to wait 25 years later and the PlayStation VR is in my hands. While looking around for a new title to play, I started thinking to myself what game pushes the PlayStation VR to the max, and I finally found it, Farpoint. The best way I could describe this game if you combine all the best elements of Pitch Black, Area 51, and Interstellar into one coherent package, you get this game. I know that's saying a lot about the game, even though what you're seeing on screen isn't exactly representative of what I experienced on the PSVR headset versus what is recorded on the PlayStation 4. The reason behind it is the PlayStation 4 is grossly underpowered, so Sony did a little trick where they created a processing unit that comes with every single VR headset so it could render close, medium, and far range views. And doing so lowers the texture fidelity of the PlayStation 4 as it has to render images at a lower texture rate and then combine that to processing unit so it will not go below 30 FPS. Well, 30 FPS on the main system. But what does that mean for VR? What does this game stand for? And which leads me to the first award, the golden eye of PlayStation VR. I'm not saying that it's exactly the same, but what it's doing for the system is exactly what GoldenEye did for Nintendo 64. This title is the baseline for all first person shooters, so you know exactly how to use the aim controller properly with the camera, including the DualShock 4 controller. I couldn't get my hands on the aim controller, so the DualShock 4 controller had to do, and I'm going to say it was spot on. Every time I brought up the weapon to my face, it was absolutely correct. Not perfect, but correct. The moving controls were spot on as I could choose which way I want to turn versus just doing click turning or just smooth turning or even blinders. I could decide on what to do. I'm expecting future first person shooters to follow suit as this is the baseline for all games for movement. I forgot to mention that the PSVR has two extra controllers, the move controller and the aim controller. Sometimes they're optional, other times they're required. Farpoint is best played with the aim controller, but it is optional. You could definitely fall back to the DualShock 4 controller, but it is required to play this game. Something else that I noticed about Sony, it did not give a comfort rating system as the Gear VR does or the Oculus does for every single VR title. I was a little surprised by this because what if someone has a disability where they're not going to be able to move at a certain rate or what is required by this game? So by not providing a rating system, someone might have to return this game because of a physical ailment or they're going to be at a loss of money. For this reason alone, I'm going to rate it as intense because you are going to be whipping left and right and you do not, I'm going to repeat, you do not want to be sitting down. It is too much fun. So if you have any vertebrae issues, this title is not for you. I shouldn't have said that you are free to do whatever you want, but I highly advise that you use caution while playing this game if you have some back issues. With movement out of the way and it's being rock solid, let's talk about gameplay as I felt that it was really solid. It is slow as compared to other first person shooters, but it's slow in a good way. Which leads me up to the second award, Total Immersion. Many games in this genre try to push you through the storyline as quick as possible so you can hop on multiplayer and spend your cash on loot boxes. I'm glad they did not do this with Farpoint so I actually got to enjoy the world. I actually looked off a cliff and really felt like I was going to fall off. That is the type of immersion that is needed for VR. Take it slow and slowly ramp up the speed. Since this was my first time using the DualShock 4 as an aim controller, it took a little bit getting used to, but after 5 minutes, I was right at home. The development team did a great job by ensuring that the enemies had the proper movement speed so you could get used to the controls at first, and then later on, the intensity starts ramping up. There are sections that are chaotic, but never at one point that I felt that I was overwhelmed or I was ill-equipped to handle the situation. Everything so far sounds like it's a must-buy, but let me bring up the storyline, it's kind of mediocre. I'm not saying that the storyline is not good, it's just been done before, where you go to a different planet, you gotta shoot bugs, and you gotta get off. Yes, not all enemy types are bugs, but you kinda get the drift of shooting alien life forms to get off the planet, which has been done before. The saving grace of this game is the NPCs. They're wonderful voice actors that conveyed emotion and including the track and face tracking that was done onto the NPCs was fantastic. Can you please stop wasting time with that? It's not relevant to us getting home. It's not 
useful to our survival. If we don't get out of here, it doesn't matter how interesting this place is, no one will ever know. So at the very least, you should be cataloging rations or maybe... Maybe... Include this into VR where you could take multiple angles, absolutely see the individual faces. This was a personal experience. I have not experienced this with any game. Games like The Order or The Last of Us does convey a lot of emotion through cutscenes, but it's totally different when you could take the angle where you are experiencing it up close. And that is what VR is all about. Making the experience personal, making the connections that you are not able to connect with the normal media. And I think about a lot of mediocre games that I've played in the past, if I was able to play it in VR, it would have been a totally different experience, and I might have even loved the game even more. So my final verdict is must buy if you have a PlayStation VR. I should note that this was the fifth PSVR title that I did purchase, so it wasn't my first, but I'm going to tell you, it should have been my first. Well, I hope you enjoyed this review. Join me on the next one. Until then, see ya.